Hello and welcome to another episode of Scott Reads Comics. Today we've got a doozy. Marvel 2-in-1 presents The Thing in Captain America, published by Marvel Comics in 1978. This is Marvel 2-in-1 number 42. What is the sinister secret of Project Pegasus? Chaos is the cosmic cube. We have an amazing George Perez cover here with Terry Austin inks. Our corner box features our usual mainstay of the title, The Thing, Ben Grimm, and his guest star, Captain America. Let's dive in, shall we? Our writer, Ralph Macchio, Sal Buscema, Alfredo Alcala, and Sam Granger are our artists. Joe Rosen is the letterer. Neil Yomtov, the colorist. Roger Stern, editor, and Jim Shooter is the editor-in-chief. And this issue features the very first appearance of Project Pegasus. Mere months ago, the builders of Project Pegasus, a mammoth energy research facility in upstate New York, proudly proclaimed that the complex was utterly impregnable. At this moment, however, that claim is falling before the pile-driving fists of a being who's made a career of shattering precedence, that ever-loving, blue-eyed thing. Gangway, you crumb bums. I'm coming through. Intruder alert. Cripes, he's busting up six-inch titanium steel. The one Project Pegasus worker thinks to himself as they rush forward with these stabs. And then after that splash page, we have this amazing double page spread which features our guest star as well. And our title, Entropy, Entropy. I ain't in no mood for clowning with you meatballs. Nothing's stopping me from getting what I came for. You get in my way, you get hurt. You men, stay back. Let me handle this. Captain America leaps forward. Pretty great here. Awesome. Look at the tech here. Sal's really knocking it out on this double page spread. And again, we have Alfredo Alcala and Sam Granger on inks and finishes. So this is a pretty amazing uh, result from our art trio here. You want to handle something, Winghead? All right, handle this. Bawang! Grim, don't. Whatever your reasons, let's... Oof! What a powerhouse, Cap's th Cap thinks to himself. Gotta goad him and goad him. Make him careless. Leap all you want, because when I finally connect, by then I'll be picking up my Avengers pension. The only thing you're going to be picking up is your teeth. Show me where you're hiding one dar before I run up run you up a flagpole sideways. And uh, we get an editor's note here. Wondar is the superhuman man-child from the stars, last seen in Ms. Marvel number 15. Hold it, Ben. I know you were once Wondar's guardian, but Project Pegasus is too important for you to. You ain't listening, mask, mask, man. That's too bad for you. So, um... This refers to the point when Thing was actually briefly Wondar's guardian, and they say that happened in Marvel 2 and 1, number 2 through 4. So that was some time ago, as we're on issue 42 now. So our writer, Ralph Macchio, is picking up on an old plot point here to introduce some exciting new elements into the Marvel Universe. If that's the way you want it, come and get me. No blame button pushing is going to help you once I get my paws on you. So Cap suckers Ben into moving into the line of this, um, some kind of uh, ray field here. Um, ben, no one's going to hurt anybody. You'd know that if you just let me explain. But no, you come tearing in here, trampling government property, endangering lives, and wasting my time. If you're going to act like a madman, I'll treat you like one. You made your point, angel ears. I apologize. I guess when you got a kisser like mine, you don't expect anyone to listen unless you make lots of noise. Just do me one favor, will you? What's that? Cap asks. Let me down easy. Sorry. Moments later, as a, as a much subdued Ben Grimm is shown the sights. Man, I ain't seen so much nutty hardware since Stretch had a garage sale. Spare me the hick routine, Ben. As an ex-test pilot, your science know-how is better than mine. Yeah, maybe. But I got me an image to protect. 
Just what do they do? What do they do with this oversized Burger King? Project Pegasus is a special program organized by the new Department of Energy. All sources of energy are being studied here in attempts to find viable power substitutes. It's also supposed to be a to be top secret. How'd you ever find out about it? I got my sources, pal, just like you. So two great things here. One. Cap points out something that we sometimes forget, that Ben is actually a pretty smart guy, text po test pilot, um, plane jockey, all that sort of thing. And he's been around the Fantastic Four for years and absorbs a lot more of Reed Richards' science know-how than he lets on. And two here, a little bit of mystery. He's got connections and sources that are not clearly laid out, but um, it gives him a little extra wrinkle after all these years still developing the thing's character, which is cool. Anyway, thanks for the 50 cent tour. Now how's about we go find Mundar? I'm still kind of anxious as to why you got the kid. If it'll put your mind at ease, Ben, I'll escort you personally. Hey, I almost forgot to ask, Winghead, how come you're waltzing around here? There have been a few security problems here recently and Nick Fury asked me to poke around, unofficially. Yeah, great, another great Ben Grimm one-liner coming up here. Yeah? Well, you're about as inconspicuous as Gene Simmons in a monastery. Sometimes the most obvious things are the easiest overlooked. I'm sure you've heard that from Reed Richards. Sure, and that makes you both idiots. Me, I'm just amazed you didn't ask me who Gene Sim. Oh, hey, you, that Leitner guy. So another reference to a previous story. Um, he This is um, Thomas Leitner, who was a character named Black Sun from issue 21 of Marvel 2 and 1. Always love this ad. I wonder if it's uh, Marie Severin. Really cool artwork there. Not a Marvel ad, a Slim Jim ad, but cool. Yes, my cellular decay was reversed thanks to exceptional treatment of Dr. Donald Blake, who is Thor, as we all know, or was at this time. Dr. Leitner is our foremost consultant on the cosmic energy, Ben. The project owes him a, a debt of gratitude. Why, thank you, Captain. But thing is suspicious. Um, about him, and this is a plot line that will pay off much later. Meanwhile, so they're using the kid as a lousy guinea pig, just because he's got the strength of an elephant and a brain to match, of all the belly crawling malarkey. Look, Ben, I'm not exactly happy with the high-handed way the boy was seized, but, well, he is an illegal alien. But in return for his help, we hope to cure his stunted mental growth, and in the meantime, he's helping unlock the secrets of the Cosmic Cube. S.H.I.E.L.D. retrieved it after the defeat of Thanos, and its latent thought wave properties are being explored as an energy source. So great way by writer Machia of weaving the Cosmic Cube into this story as well. So here, Wondar makes his first appearance, and he is rather uh, rudely shackled here, but he shows his amazing super strength and, and breaks the shackles and goes on the run again. Don't let him escape. Drop him with a stun blast. Ben! Cap screams as Ben leaps into action. Lay off him, you lugs, or so help me. I'll have you eating them pop guns. Kid, hey kid, it's me, your Uncle Benji, remember? Uncle, Uncle Benji? Oh, Uncle Benji, I need you. Come here, kid, I know you're hurting inside. Just let me hold you a second. It'll go away. So Ben, comforting the childlike um, Wundar, Great ad for the Marvel t-shirts. Always love to see that one. I'll be with you through this whole mess, kid. I swear it, and I'll clobber the first guy that tries to harm you. So Ben is doing his best to comfort him. The comforting hand is slowly, reluctantly removed from Wondar's sloping shoulder. Once again, he is alone. Go on, kid. I'll be watching you every minute. It'll be over before you know it. Ain't that right, Doc? No harm will befall the boy, I assure you. Still quivering ever so slightly, the man-child from the stars allows himself to be strapped in, never guessing that his mind holds the primal trigger for unlocking the forces of the strangely suspended cube. He tenses involuntarily as a lowered psi helmet suddenly blocks out his vision, and then, I suggest you exit quickly, Mr. Grimm. The cube is very unstable, especially under these conditions. Reluctantly, the brooding thing watches his three-foot-thick barriers of omnium steel and quartz slide into place between him and the boy. Watches 
as the Project Technos activate the Psy Helmet from their safe chamber of safety. Gently prodding Wundar's nascent psyche, nudging his mental energies through the psychosensitive feeder cables. Watches as the Cosmic Cube throbs to life. Great shot here of the crackle around the Cosmic Cube and all the connections to it. But as minutes turn into an eternity for the frightened youth, his anxiety gives way to trembling fear. Uncle Benji, Uncle Benji, you here? Uncle Benji? And the thing watches here. Let me know I did the right thing by not grabbing that poor kid and lambing out of here like I wanted to do. Come on, mister, tell me. What can I say, Ben? All the men in this room have that boy's safety uppermost in their minds. All, perhaps, save one. The life-loving simpletons. Their alleged pursuit of progress is about, a, is about to suffer a slight setback. And that is not Dr. Leitner. That is a different sinister scientist. Suddenly, the young alien is bombarded with coarse caning energy from a lashing power feedback. Ah, great Salbusema, classic Salbusema face here in, in, in writhing agony. Is that your safety measures, mister? That kid's being turned into a crisp bacon while he, we stand here gawking. That equipment's too carefully maintained to go a haywire accidentally. It had to be sabotaged, but who? Wait a minute. That figure on the catwalk, moving away from the override switch. So much for being Nick Fury's unofficial observer. It's time for a little problem solving of the physical kind. Cap leaps into action. You, freeze. I won't ask twice. Blast. I, of all people, should have known you could reach me up here. No matter. Getting to me and getting at me are entirely different things. As he just swats Cap back with almost relative ease. Ugh, he tagged me like I was some kind of second-string amateur. His strength, speed, they're almost like my own. What did he mean that he, of all people, should know? We couldn't have fought before. I'd never forget a guy with a punch like that. And his cap sinks groggily to the floor. The massive safety walls finally give way under the thing's frenzied blows. Hang on, kid, I'm coming. He's out cold, but thank God he's still breathing. The cube, it's almost within reach. Stop mumbling, mister, and give me a hand with the kid. He's dying. I have what I've come for, you orange-skinned misanthrope. The means to reshape a world if I wish. Here he seizes the cube. And before the thing's disbelieving gaze, the triumphant figure winks out. And I so wish. Some thousand miles away, chanting cultists, Fill the steaming air of the Everglades with a droning cadence. Yagzan desulami netrophos. Yagzan rana. Yagzan altra. And you see a skeleton rising here. Very cool. Slowly, the chant dies out. Glazed eyes staring skyward at the pulsating pinprick of light that suddenly appears brightening and growing as if being squeezed through some unseen portal. The eerie radiance bays the startled onlookers as the glowing globular mass twists, stretches, and takes on the form of a man. Greetings, my brethren. Do not be fooled by my disguise. I am indeed your leader, victorious. And he rips this mask off and reveals who he truly is. And I come brandishing the power to remake reality in our own image, the image of the Entropists. So editor's note here, victorious is from Astonishing Tales, and the cult of the Entropists are from Giant Size Man Thing number one. So plenty of old continuity being woven back into this story, this new story here. Very cool. Meanwhile, back at Project Pegasus. Luckily, the costume Reed Richards designed for him absorbed some of the energy feedback. Still, he was hit with so much, it looks bad, Ben. The little guy trusted me, Cap. How am I ever going to live with myself if, I don't if he don't pull through? Nobody ever said life makes any sense or death. Either for that matter. Blaming yourself won't do any good. That's a nice speech, Winghead. Try telling it to the kid they just took out of here on a stretcher. I can't write the past any more than you can, but I do know what it's like to lose someone. I know you mean well, Cap, but it ain't every day I find someone who needs me for something besides a strong pair of arms. 
Only one thing's gonna take my mind off the kid. And that's finding the creep who lit off with a cube. He's the one who hurt Wendy. In that case, I think I can help you, Ben. Come with me. So they come across this experimental plane with the ability to trace the unique energy uh, signature of the cube. Hey, not so fast, Ben. The ground crew has just begun the final check. Nuts, we ain't got time for a Simonized job. That cube's dangerous. We gotta find it, and fast. Stand around John if you like. Me, I'm gonna bring, bring him back alive. The cube, that is. I ain't decided about the creep who swiped it. But sir, you can't. Stow it, fella. Mr. Grimm here probably knows more about this buggy than the guys who designed her. Now you're talking my language, flag face. Get in. So they take off and they're flying and they wind up silently on whispering turbines. They descend into the very heart of the time lost Everglades. Better set her down here, Ben, or we run the risk of being spotted. I was afraid you was gonna say that. So, instrument readings indicate that the cube is due south. And you sure that doohickey ain't on the blink? I mean, who the heck would steal the cosmic cube and then split for this chunk of nowhere? There's no mistake, Ben. The cube must be dead ahead. It better be. I'm in no mood to go slogging through the glop that just to, just to play Raymar or the jungle. Phew. I'm gonna need a bath and, hey, what's wrong, Winghead? The needle, it's going wild. It's blam! Gets blasted from off panel. Great shot there. Love the uh, speed and impact lines that uh, Sal and crew put in here. Don't worry about your Tinker Toy Cap. I think we just found out what we was looking for. What the devil? Welcome, my foolhardy friends. You have arrived at a most auspicious moment. I am about to usher in a new order for the universe. With your deaths, the era of entropy is upon us. It is the day of victorious and the entropic man. What a revolting development this is. Great final full page uh, panel here of, uh, of what's to come in the next issue. Next, the day the world ran down, guest starring the macabre man thing. So, we're, of course, we're in the Florida Everglades. We're going to have Man-Thing. He's going to show up. And we're going to have a real treat in the next issue because we're also going to have John Byrne artwork. It's going to be awesome. But I do love this art team on this issue with Sal Buscema. Um, quick revisit of the ever loving blue Eye letters page, the letters page for Marvel 2-in-1. Regular letter hack Peter Petrusky from uh, Millerton, New York. Um, I'll just read a little bit of his columns of his, uh, a little bit of his letter that he wrote in. The characterization of Ben Grimm was by far the best done to date. His exterior may be that of a monster, but deep down inside, he's something everyone can love. He's been feared and hated by many ordinary people for years, even though he's risked everything for them. Now that his life is crumbling, he seems to be losing all hope. He considers himself guilty and deserving of being locked away. Ben Grimm has, has been through a dozen hells and his soul is finally losing. He simply doesn't care. Page 26, panels 3 to 5, really touched me, Marv. Actually hurt me. Thank you for the story. So this is referring to Marvel 2 and 1, number 37, which I think is the thing in Daredevil or the thing in Matt Murdock. Great issue. Marvel 2 and 1, number 42. Uh, we're going to cover 43 and uh, everything following from that. It's going to be uh, pretty great to read through those with you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. I appreciate you watching, and I'll bring you more soon on Scott Reed's Comics. Thank you.